today is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort, oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, Yet the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight to the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and justly lead the mother sheep, the word of God. When I had our first child, I took her to the pediatrician, as many of you have done, and they explained to me that she needed her first vaccinations. Now, this is routine, lots of people do this, but for a first time mom, it's not routine at all. I was rather startled to discover they expected me to hold her down while somebody jabbed her with that needle. And that was a little bit disconcerting to me. Every fiber of my being told me that my job in the world was to protect that child from harm. And not only was the needle gonna hurt, but they told me that she probably was going to feel sick for the rest of that day and would be cranky and fussy and uncomfortable. And there was a part of me that said, I'm going home, forget it. <laughs> we don't want this. But I knew something that my daughter could not possibly know at that moment, and that was that what we were doing was really in the long term a good thing. It was meant to prevent more suffering and pain, but there had to be some suffering and pain in the process. And so I held her down, and the nurse stuck that needle in, and Michelle cried and cried and cried. And much to my surprise, when I picked her up, she snuggled right into my neck and just kind of settled down and it was such a warm, cozy feeling. And I was astounded that she wanted me to comfort her. I had just participated in hurting her. <laughs> but somehow she seemed to have this instinctual knowledge that I was there for her comfort and her protection. And it was my love that she wanted when she was hurt. And so she snuggled in, and I was awed by the trust, and by the faith, really, that that little tiny person had in me. It was an awesome experience. When I hear the scripture that Frank just read, I wonder if that wasn't a little bit what it was like for the Hebrew people. The Bible tells us that to enter the kingdom of God, we need to become like children. And I don't mean at all to minimize the pain of these people. They had been through a tremendous amount over years and years. We mentioned last week, invading armies had overrun them. Their temple had been destroyed. They had no place to worship. Some of them were exiled. They were scattered abroad. It was a terrible, terrible, terrible time. But now a word is coming from Isaiah. This prophet arises, Isaiah, and he is saying words of comfort. Comfort, comfort my people. 
Just like I picked up my baby daughter and said, there, there, it's all over now. The prophet says that God wants to, the people to know this time of trouble is ending. There is happiness coming now. There is joy. God is going to lead them home. It's an amazing thing. And on top of that, there's more good news. The prophet says, a voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level. Well, the people of the time would have recognized some of these words. They heard them when a king was coming. Of course, they didn't have smooth paved roads like we have. And so if the king was traveling to your town, people would come ahead of him to help you get ready. When the reins and the chariots made big giant ruts in the road, nobody wanted the king to come bouncing over those. And so people would get together and smooth out those rough places, fill in the divots and build up and smooth down those hills. They were making a way for the king to come that was smooth. But now Isaiah says, this is more than a king that's coming. This is the Lord, and you prepare for this in your heart. You smooth the way for God by preparing in your heart for the coming of the Lord. And this is extraordinary news because these people have felt abandoned by God. They have wondered at times, where is this God that we thought loved us so tenderly? And now they hear the word of the prophet. Comfort is coming to you. Peace is coming to you. God will lead you home, so make ready. Make those rough places smooth. And then the prophet says, The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, for all people shall see it together. This is monumental. In those days, people believed that if you fought a battle and you lost, it was because your God was not as strong as the winner's God. So these folks had been feeling like maybe the implication here is our God is pretty feeble because we've had a rough time of it. But Isaiah says, no, your God is mighty, your God is strong, your God is coming, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and everybody's going to see it. All those people who have given you such a rough time are going to know who your God is and that your God is mighty. How do we know this? Isaiah says, because the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Then he goes into an interesting part where he talks about we're all like grass. We dry up and we just blow away. And to most of us, that's a little bit disconcerting. It reminds us of our mortality, which is something we don't usually like to be reminded of. But put yourself in the place of people who have been oppressed for generations. This idea that all people are grass implies that even your oppressors are mortal. They're going to fade away too. There's going to come a time where this time of trouble is over. And that's something good. That's something to rejoice in. So the idea that all of us are grass is actually an encouraging thing. And then Isaiah says, because the word of the Lord will live forever. God is going to fix this time of trouble, and then that word will live forever. So Isaiah says, you've got to get up on a mountain. You have got to speak the good news, because you all know it now. You have been oppressed, but now you know good news. Your Lord is coming. Good things are going to happen. You are the herald of glad tidings. This is great news for the people that have been scattered for so long. Isaiah implies that their God is mighty and strong, but also that he is going to feed his flock like a shepherd. That image of Jesus holding the lamb, so tender, a very, very tender but mighty God. And again, it reminds me of that moment of picking up my daughter, holding her close, knowing that trust. Jesus could accomplish all that he did because he trusted entirely in God. And we are invited also to trust in that same way in our God. It must have sounded a little bit crazy for these people who had been in trouble for so long to hear Isaiah talking about a wonderful time coming. 
And it sounds a little bit crazy still to people today. I've had people ask me, why do you believe in Jesus? The world is such a mess. But you know what? We are invited to participate in this good news. It's true, the kingdom is not here yet, but we are now the ones invited to be the voices crying out in the wilderness to make the way straight. God is coming, God is acting. God has already acted. And I don't think it's coincidence that God chose to act by bringing his son to this earth in the form of a child. A child who trusted in God the way a newborn baby trusts in their parents. That child trusted in God and modeled for us what it means to truly trust God in all ways. So in this Advent season, we're invited to prepare the way. We're invited to share the good news. And you know, I see it breaking in all the time in this church. I saw it last night with that moon rising over the lake and the words of scripture coming out so beautifully and people stopping to listen because they were hungry to hear it. I see it every time we rent a bus so kids can get on it and go visit their parents who are imprisoned. I see it when we make backpacks to give to children on what is probably the worst day, or at least one of the worst days of their lives. I see it in our prayer shawl ministry when we have people who lovingly make these shawls and then we all bless them and send them out to people we don't even know. And you heard today the results of that kind of ministry. We are called to share the love and the good news that our faith matters and through it, we can be signs of hope and healing for all the world. You know, sometimes we have a tendency to sit back and think that our life is too difficult. We focus on things we've lost, things that we can't do anymore, money that hasn't worked out the way we hope it would. When we do that, we are tempted sometimes to give in to despair, to just give up and say, what's it all worth? But then there are those days, and I hope we all have had them, when that glimmer of hope breaks into our heart. And it's like a, a little ember. Last night we had trouble lighting the fire to make the s'mores, and we were laboring over this little tiny ember, don't go out, don't go out. We have that ember in our hearts, and every now and then it fans into flame, and we know. We know there is hope in the world because we see what our efforts can do. We know what it feels like when another member of this church ministers to us. And we begin to believe again, or still, that there is hope. That one day we're gonna be rid of all the racism and the sexism and the pessimism and all the isms in the world. One day we're going to know a time when there is peace. One day we will know a time when everyone is healed and there is no more crying or gnashing of teeth. It's Advent. It's a time for hope. It's a time for love. And even in the midst of whatever difficulties you might be going through, it's a time of joy. May God bless us on our journey together. Amen. And now